Well, and welcome to Golden Bear Insider. Glad you could join us for this month's edition of the show. Doing it a couple weeks uh, uh, later, trying to get all these schedules to match up. Pretty busy time of year, but we get to do it at a good time. Concordia coming off a very successful Saturday with the men's and women's basketball teams both picking up big wins. Women winning both games last weekend. The volleyball team coming up with a national title, their eighth in program history, and the track team getting off to a strong start as well down in Mankato. So we're going to talk to all four of those teams today, and it starts with women's basketball. We're joined by head coach Amanda Johnson, sophomore guard Anna Schmidt, and appreciate both of you joining us here today. Yes. And um, the team, uh, off, 10 games in now, Amanda, 7-3 mm-hmm. and three start, 3-1 three and one in the conference. Uh, talked to you before the season started, kind of got a sense of what your thoughts were going in. Is the season matched up to kind of your goals, your expectations so far, how the team has performed? Definitely. I know we we're going to have a couple of tough road games right away with our, our trips we're making, but you know our main goal was to protect our home court, and so far we've done a really good job of that. Um, another thing we've working on is our defense, and our you know our defense has come a long way from the beginning of the year, just holding teams to you know about 62, 63 points right now, um, and that's one of our main focuses in practice is working on our defense because then our offense will flow a lot easier. So so far, I'm really impressed with the girls, and we have one more game this weekend, and hope to go into break with you know still being undefeated on our home court. You mentioned that defense. You've had a couple games at home, uh, Friday against Upper Iowa, that game against Concordia Portland, where you've been struggling to make shots, kind of get the offense going, but still have been able to win with that defensive performance. What does that kind of do for the team to get those results and kind of see that the defensive work can pay off? Yep, and, you know, our our Augustana Wayne weekend, on Friday night in Augustana, we couldn't shoot. Um, We did a good job with them defensively, but then we came into Wayne the next day, and, you know, I just – our team just played so much more confident on the offensive end, and that helped us a long way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I tell the girls all the time in pregame, just if we can hold teams to 62 points and out-rebound them, our offense will just, you know, work itself out. We don't have to, you know, force shots. We can use our shot clock type of thing, and I think that's come a long way, um, especially with Lenona. I mean, you know, holding them to what we did was awesome for a good team like that. And you've gotten Lauren Schiffle back from her injury. Mm-hmm. Michelle Jones missed the one game last weekend, but just a temporary thing. Are you excited to kind of get your starting five together now and start to build some continuity? Yes, definitely. I mean, we ended the year playing really well, you know, even against Winona. And I think having Lauren Schiffle back, too, is she can not only play in offense, but she's really good on defense. So just having her on both sides of the floor is really, really important to have her back this year. And just, you know, the team chemistry we talked about last time is these girls ending the season so well playing together. And that's one thing that we're really seeing from them right now is they're starting to play in you know, the same way they ended the year last year. And Anna, for the team getting that win on Saturday over Winona State, a team that was nationally ranked, uh, picked to be one of the top teams in the conference, what does that do for the team's confidence so early in the season to know you can compete at the highest level? Um, I think it just shows that when we show up as a team and it just pretty much shows that we can beat any team once we like play as a team. And we had unfinished business from last year I guess you could say from them beating us um, in the Pentagon so it was a huge win for us and we were all super pumped and we I mean we played hard so I think that we deserved it. You obviously had a lot of individual success as a freshman and off to a good start, of course, again this year. But if you notice teams have been defending you a little bit differently, game planning for you a little differently, kind of knowing you're on the scouting report from last year? Yeah, they pretty much just forced me left the whole time because they know I like to use my right hand. And they're forcing me to like pick up a mid-range game, so I've been working on that. And as well as my defense, um, I didn't really play much man-to-man in high school. I sat in the bottom of the zone and rebounded, so I'm not like super used to it. So I'm getting there with that, and I just keep working on it every day. You shot the ball pretty well on Saturday, only had the six field goal attempts, and kind of figure maybe you'll have some games like that where teams are denying you uh, maybe as many shots as you've been accustomed to. How have you kind of worked on your efficiency so you can still get that offensive production? Um, I just kind of read what they give me, and if it's not there, it's not there. We have four other offensive threats that can score just as much as anybody else, so I kind of just read what they give me. I take shots that they like allow me to take, and if not, I'll create for other people to mm-hmm. let them score too. Mm-hmm. Talked with uh, Amanda about getting Michelle Jones, Lauren Schifflet back. Uh, how has that helped you, a couple of experienced players, and kind of being able to work with them in the backcourt? Um, we just kind of know how each other plays. Like we always know where the other one is, so we just flow really nicely, and it's easy to play with them. Um, I mean, Lauren's a great shooter. Shay can create. We all just 
do little things that help each other out and we just fall really well together. Mm -hmm. And then um, you've got, Amanda, you mentioned you've got the Minnesota State game coming up on Saturday yep. and the last game kind of before you get into the holiday break. And certainly that's always a big game, rivalry game. Mm -hmm. But is, is the team's going to have a little bit of time off, maybe not be practicing for a few days? How important is it to kind of get a good result in that one and, and keep the, the good momentum flowing? You know what it is? We've been talking about practice this week and how we have, you know, now two practices left and how important it is because of a break. We're not going to practice as a team, so we really want to focus these practices. I think going into break, you know, beating Mankato and staying undefeated in our home court is so huge and for our momentum coming back after break. So we're really focusing on having a good couple of practices and taking it to Mankato um, on our home court because they still have, they have four setters coming back from last year. So they're a tough team. So I really want these girls to come out ready to go on a home court. And uh, outside of just being mentally prepared and everything, what's the biggest key, do you think, in terms of how you're playing to keeping that going? Yep, you know, I'm going to defense. Um, Mankato can score. They have a lot of weapons with scoring. They have a post player, you know, who's averaging about 16 points a game all around scoring. Um, so I think if we can play the defense that we want, shut down their two key players, and then our offense will just fall into place, those are the main things that we're really going to focus and out-rebound them because Mankato is leading our conf conference in offensive rebounds. So we've been working on that a lot this, this, this week. Well, Amanda and Anna, thanks for joining us here today, and uh, we'll talk to you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Amanda Johnson and Anna Schmidt here on Golden Bear Insider, and they will play on at, on Saturday at 2 o'clock against Minnesota State, that last game before the holiday break, be the doubleheader with the men's game following it right around 4. So we'll have the coverage of that one through cugoldenbears.com and School Space Media. You can also of course, come on out to the Gangelhoff Center as well. But we are joined now by the men's basketball team, joined by head coach Joey James, also guard Diallo Powell, and uh, the men's team also coming off a big win this past Saturday over Winona State. couple games coming up this weekend. Thank you both for joining us here today. Thanks for having us. And, uh, Coach, I guess is you know you get <clears throat> decent ways into the season here, about a month in. You've seen some non-conference games, now played the four conference games. For what – for you, what kind of stand out as the biggest storyline so far for the team? Well, right now we're just not playing uh, consistent basketball. And Diallo will be the first one to tell you. Um, coming into practice, we're just trying to get better every single day. Uh, but we got to get better uh, every day on the court, leads into from practice into games. Um, we're just not there yet. We're just not there. We're young, we're inexperienced. Uh, but I like our guys, I like our talent. Uh, we got to get better defensively, um, but uh, I, I keep reminding these guys all the time that we got to be everyday guys, and right now we're just not there. Is it getting better in kind of all phases? Is there one area that kind of stands out as a top priority? No, you know what? Uh, we just we don't take care of the ball like we need to. I know last game we did a pretty good job. Uh, we need to share the ball the more, um, but I just think overall, I mean, it's it's. Uh, Defensively, we're we're just we're not competing every single day at the level we need to, and and uh, we're we're trying to get the guys on the same page, and it takes a little bit of time. I mean, if you go back to last year, uh, early on we struggled, uh, and then once our guys started figuring out our defense philosophies and things of that nature, I, I thought we we picked it up and we were way better down the stretch. Same thing this year uh, with seven new guys. We're trying to do the same thing, and and uh, you know it's just taking a little bit longer, and I've got to learn to have a little bit more patience with it. Um, and these guys know I'm probably the most impatient guy, uh, which is helping me grow as a coach also. But, uh, you know, we're here to compete. And uh, when I feel like we're not competing at the level we're capable of, then it's disappointing. Uh, but last game I thought we competed. We, we, we played hard. We were more consistent uh, with our approach to practice that week. Uh, and I thought it led into a, a great win for us. You've gotten very good rebounding from the guards. <clears throat> Diallo here and Brendan, top two rebounders on the team. They both had double doubles. Brendan did on Saturday. You like to play that four guard lineup, which obviously you wouldn't be able to do if you're getting killed on the glass. Kind of how do you emphasize that with those two getting on the boards? And, and what does that do for your team to, to have them with that ability? Well, Diallo and Brendan are pretty dang good athletes. Uh, probably two of the better athletes in this league, and so that helps us. Uh, I would say if Diallo was 6'3 and unathletic and Brendan was 6'4 and unathletic, we probably wouldn't be able to play that way. Uh, but they do a good job, and, and uh, you know, I tell you, Diallo's doing a, a much better job this year of, of trying to lead. Uh, I still expect more out of him, uh, but, uh, but he's, he's starting to figure out exactly what we want out of him as far as a person in terms of uh, coming to practice every day and leading by example. But 
him and Brennan are good players. I mean, they, they really are, and, and uh, I think they're going to continue to be better as we progress through the year, but uh, pretty dang good athletes to have on your team. Matt Ambry is a storyline as well, shooting over 55% from three on, on a lot of volume, two, almost six attempts per game. Um, shot the ball well last year, but obviously a big improvement. What has he, what has he kind of done going into the year, and what's, what's been the key to his success? Well, it's just this is his third year in the program. I know he's just a redshirt sophomore, uh, second year as a player, obviously, but uh, he's just a confident dude. I mean, Matty is a very confident uh, young man that uh, he believes in his shot, we believe in his shot, and so there's times when he shoots quick ones where I'm sitting there wondering if that was a good or bad shot but when you're shooting 55 percent from the three um sometimes you just got to kind of let him go a little bit but uh he might miss two uh in a row but he'll hit his next three or four so pretty proud of the way he's playing right now he's got to get better defensively off the ball um and on the ball of course but uh but i like i like the way he's playing for us right now he's a he's a guy that's playing with a ton of confidence Diallo team showing a lot of resiliency. Um, it was, you know, maybe one of the tougher losses of the year Friday against Upper Iowa. You came back, got the big win over Winona State. What did you kind of talk about after that Upper Iowa game and, and able to get things turned around pretty quickly? Um, for us, after the game, I just told them, you know, just to learn from it because, you know, we have, a, we have a young team, so we're going to have a lot of growing pains each game. So I just told them to keep their head up, and we got one tomorrow. So just move on and focus on the next one as we go. So. How much can that help the team's confidence getting that, that first conference win out of the way and, and kind of knowing that you can turn it around in these, in these weekends pretty quickly? I think it helps our confidence a lot, just knowing that we have the ability to beat anybody if we sit down and guard and execute our game plan coming into the game. So as long as we do that and we give good effort and have great attitude, I feel like we can, uh, we can beat anybody. <laughs> And uh, Joey, we got Bethel coming in on Friday on conference game, but one of the better D3 teams in, in the region, certainly. And then Minnesota State off to a bit of a slow start, but of course, always a lot of talent there. What do you see as the as the keys in those two games here this weekend? Well, Bethel is uh, they've only lost one game, and that game was by two points, I believe. And so we've been watching film on those guys. Uh, they got all five starters returning from a year ago. I believe they were picked second in that league um, behind Saint uh, Saint Thomas. So they're a good team. Uh, veteran group, uh, they run, they run some pretty good motion stuff. We ju we're just gonna have to do what we do. You know, I keep reminding these guys that we've been focusing so much on what other teams are doing right now instead of what we're trying to get better at. And so, if we just, uh, if we can defend and execute offensively, I think, I think we'll be okay in that game. And then leading into Saturday, um, Mankato's off to a tough start. I mean, this league's tough. The South is, even the North. I mean, they're both very good, um, but. They played without Joey Wittes last weekend, uh, the entire weekend, and I thought that hurt them. It's their leading score average in 16 a game. Uh, we're, uh, we're assuming he's going to play this weekend. I believe he had an ankle injury. Um, we will prepare like he's going to be uh, playing for those guys. So uh, they do a great job of dribble drive. Uh, we're going to have to do a really good job of containing our guy. We're going to have to close some gaps up, uh, but we are really going to have to rebound against these guys. And if we can just execute offensively and, and uh, get points in the paint, uh, it should be a great game. Well, Joey and Diallo, thanks again, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Joey James and Diallo Powell here on Golden Bear Insider. That'll be at 6 o'clock on Friday with Concordia taking on Bethel, and then right around 4 o'clock is game two of the doubleheader against Minnesota State on Saturday. So, uh, again, encourage you to check those games out this weekend as we – Continue on with the show here. We're going to be joined by the volleyball team, of course, coming off that national championship. Wrapped it up Saturday with the win over Alaska Anchorage down in Sioux Falls. Joined by Brady Starkey and senior Casey Williams. And both of you, congratulations, of course, on the uh, championship. And thanks for joining us here today. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And um, Brady, I guess just as we kind of get into it here, team, Obviously, throughout the postseason, then really the last month or so of the regular season, coming together, winning a lot of matches, not dropping too many sets. How do you think the this team was able to peak at the right time? I guess. Well, I think that it's an experienced group, and uh, you know, I think that uh, that they really just kind of started getting things together. I think as we went, I think when we started the season, um, we weren't too concerned about getting out of the gates super fast, and we kind of tried to, you know maybe slow down the process a little bit because when you have such a senior leading senior leaded group um you know it can get old and you can get wear and stale and stuff like that so we just tried to make sure that uh that 
we were keeping it, you know, interesting, short, specific, um, throughout like the early parts of the season and then really kind of build up into um, things later in the season and it kind of worked out. So, How impressed are you with the way the team was able to manage expectations? That certainly happened coming into the year with all the seniors and then even coming out of region regions, uh, being the number one seed, there's you know, a lot of people expect a lot out of teams out of the central region, of course, knowing there were a lot of other good teams in that tournament, how they kind of manage that and still have the success. Well, I got to be honest, I don't really know. I mean, I'm, you know, we as coaching staff, we don't really talk about it a ton um, because we know that they get, you know, they get a lot of that from their parents, their fans, you know, our administration. Um, you know, I think that. Uh, so we don't really talk about it that much as, as a program and a coaching staff. So they don't get it from us. They get it from other places, and we hope that they kind of just discard that and put that aside. And and um, that's what this team was really seemed like it was able to do, is not really get too caught up in the emotion of things and really just kind of played volleyball and didn't get too, uh, you know, what's this going to mean to your team and all this kind of thing, and, and more just went out and competed and played and won points. And uh, what would you say was stands out to you maybe is this particular team's identity the the thing that you'll kind of remember most about them? Um, I think that for these guys, it's just uh, you know perseverance. I mean, I would say you know, I mean, I think that they you know they went through some probably difficult times, maybe maybe times that other people I mean wouldn't maybe say as difficult because they still had a lot of success, but. For them, I think it was difficult because they have high expectations of trying to, of wanting to win, and so I think that they kind of overcame that. Um, they really just got themselves to a point where they were just so good; they were just really difficult to, difficult to beat. I think that they realized that probably about three quarters of the way through the season that hey, if we just play, everybody just kind of does their job, and we do our job. Um, and play that were really hard to beat, and they kind of bought into that. It seems like with themselves, and and uh, that really showed, I think, in the last, definitely in the last playoff run. So, understandably, the group of seniors was kind of the focus of the team this year. But you did have some underclassmen that sort of stepped up and played big roles throughout the season as well. Was that impressive to you that they were able to kind of on a senior dominant uh, team still able to kind of assert themselves and, and play those big roles? Well, I think it makes it easier for them to play those big roles when you have senior leaders that are, you know, you don't have to worry about whether Casey or Riley or those guys are going to play. You just kind of know that they're going to play well. And when you kind of have that backing, it just doesn't put a lot of pressure on you. You kind of just go out there and freewheel it. And I think that's what our underclassmen did because they, they, they weren't the ones that had the pressure on them, I would say. It was the kids that were handling the ball and Casey having to set the ball and deliver and deliver accurate sets, those are the ones with the pressure on them. And so I think that the kids, you know, realize that maybe just instinctively, not that they were really thinking about it, but, but uh, you know, you kind of you kind of realize that you can just kind of go for it, and they've kind of got your back. So, Casey, the team had the, the stretch midway through the year. You, you had the two matches you lost at home in five sets, Minnesota Duluth, Southwest Minnesota State. And I guess, you know, if you maybe look for a turning point, a couple weeks later you, you had the back-to-back five-set matches. You kind of grinded one out against Northern State here at home, returned the favor to Minnesota Duluth. The team played very well after those two matches. Did Was that kind of a turning point, or is that maybe just sort of looking for a narrative? Did you guys feel like it was? Yeah, I think it definitely was. Um, they were learning points. Like, you're, you're going to make um, – you're not always going to make the right plays, and you just have to learn from them. And, um, kind of know that, okay, we won't do that again. And I think they were huge um, learning points for our team. How do you feel the team, you know, I think both of you have talked about it at times, pretty disappointed with the way last year ended, or certainly or your junior year um, with the, the loss at home. How did you kind of challenge that, uh, channel that through the off season and then into this season in order to have the success that you did? I mean, I know all of us had talked about it and it was like, we're never going to let that happen again. And um, I think as the year went on this year, um, it was more, we weren't thinking about the outcome as much. We knew, okay, yeah, we want to win. We're, that's never going to happen again. But at the same time, it was like, we're just going to play because we're that good. And we're going to take every single point um, to our advantage and just try and uh, grind out a win. And that's what I think we did. <laughs> Obviously, a ton of volleyball success for the team in your time here, and uh, you and a lot, a lot of your teammates, all kinds of academic success as well. Is there anything that stands out so far as kind of the thing you'll be most proud of from your time here at Concordia? 
Um, I think the most, the thing I would be the most proud of is just um, learning the work ethic. I think this program really shows that in the classroom and on the court that that um, was shown to me at a young age, and it's something that I'll keep with me for the rest of my life. So, I had time to kind of sink in and what the feelings are about being able to end your time here with a championship? Yeah, it was a good way to end it. So, <laughs> no other way to put it. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Uh, what are your What are your, kind of your plans for post Concordia? What are you thinking about doing? Um, I'm a marketing major, so I'm in the job search. Um, kind of have a couple possibly lined up in that interview process. Um, working for a marketing firm, and um, yeah, just going in the real world now. <laughs> Well, good luck with all that. And Brady, I guess just finally here, you kind of look back in this group of seniors, and I hinted at it a little bit earlier, but I guess if you could, you know, think ahead, maybe five years down the road, you're thinking back about this group, this particular team, what's the first thing that's going to kind of come to your mind about them and, and what they meant to you and, and this program? Well, just how much enjoyable, how enjoyable they were to coach and be around every day. Um, you know, I think that this is, you know, I've talked about it before as, is literally probably one of the nicest group of kids I think that I've ever coached. Um, you know, there's no no drama ever, um, really hard workers, just really good, solid people. Um, and they were fun to be around for four years. Um, some of them we had the pleasure of being around for five years with Casey and Anna redshirting, um, Donna six, you know. So, I mean, it's uh, – it's a group that was just fun to fun to be around, and uh, and they'll be missed more not because of their volleyball, but just because of the people that they are. All right. Well, again, it was a lot of fun watching you throughout the year. Congratulations, and uh, thanks for being here today. All right. Thanks for having us, Brady Starkey and Casey Williams on Golden Bear Insider, as the volleyball team wraps up that eighth national championship last weekend, and we will close out the show here with track and field who got the season started uh, this past weekend down at Minnesota State with the uh, preseason open down there so joined by uh, assistant coach Colin Goligoski and also Josh Johansson so thank you both for being here today. Thank, thank you for you. having us. And uh, Colin is a graduate assistant this year for the team. If you can just kind of talk about a little bit what your what your daily duties are, what kind of things you work on with with the athletes. Uh, mostly, I deal with our women multi eventers. So that's going to be Walk Porigavoja, Erica Young, and Callie Burney. Um, I coach them pretty much in all their events, running events. I help out kind of bas basically wherever I'm needed, uh, jumps, throws, a little bit in pole vault. Um, sometimes I'll hop in and work out with Josh here, but not very often. So. <laughs> you uh, competed here at Concordia. Did you have a sense when you were, uh, as a student athlete, that you might want to get into coaching? Um, not initially, but I, I really learned to love the sport and become kind of uh, a student of the sport. I was a very technical athlete, um, so then I th it just was a good transition for me after uh, after graduation to a graduate assistant and try and give back and help the athletes that I'm still friends with. Uh, who have you kind of talked to who's helped you out with making that transition from competing to coaching? Um, Sam Johnson, uh, he's been a big help. Um, my coach, uh, Coach Ryan, who actually left to help coach his wife go to the Olympics. Um, so they, those two have played a big, big role in helping me transition into this position. You competed as a multi-event athlete, had a lot of success. Team, as you talked about on the women's side with who you're working with, a lot of talented men, multi-event athletes as well. What is it maybe in the way the team prepares or about this team that's allowed it to have so much success with multi-event athletes? Um, I think we ask a lot of that group, and they accept that challenge. Um, we ask a lot of them in terms of practice hours and what we ask out of workouts. And expectations are usually very high, and, and they respond really, really well to those. They, they put the work in and take on those leadership roles, and they, they see a lot of success when, when we put that, those expectations on them. That group certainly successful last weekend. Anything else stand out to you as kind of highlights from that meet? Um, yeah, that, that group had a lot of success. Um, we had two qualify for nationals. Um, it'll, we got to wait and see if we go. We probably need to improve those scores. Um, it was just a, a good first meet. A lot of returners like Josh here kind of knocking the rust off, seeing where they're at in comparison to last year. Uh, a lot of the new guys and girls just kind of getting a feel for 
what college track is like and what the, the meets kind of feel the same. Um, it's just people are running a little different. And uh, Josh, you uh, competed in the 300 meters, the 400 meter relay as well. Were you pretty happy with your results out there? You know, um, kind of like I said, it, I'm never really satisfied to a certain extent, but for my initial race, I feel pretty happy with 300. Like I came in just doing high jump and then kind of transitioning into multi and now I'm a runner. So that's kind of, you know, that's one of those toss up things, but I, I felt pretty decent about it. Um, as far as four by four, um, I'm kind of I'm kind of limited to running right now, so the 400s what I'm primarily going to be focused on. So I felt decent about my time, even though it was a split. But yeah, I feel I feel okay, and the team's looking really well. As you know, the four by four is one relay in particular that I think we have a pretty good chance to go you know far in. So I feel pretty good. You mentioned making the transition to focusing more on running. How did you kind of do that? What, what kind of training were you doing in the off season? Um, yeah, I actually, I mean, I, I worked pretty hard during the off season. Uh, I had some back issues, which kind of led me to not be a multi right now for indoor. Um, but as far as running, I mean, I've just been really, really giving it 100% at every single practice we go to. And that's, you know, that's a reflection that not only helps me, but it, it pushes my teammates, you know, as well. And that, you know, it's just making everybody better and to a certain extent. So. I know recently uh, you had the ability to attend an NCA leadership conference. Uh, that, what, what was kind of what? What did you do there? What was what was that about? Yeah, Dan. Um, it was. I mean, it's to say it briefly. It was one of the best experiences of my life. I mean, it's uh, one thing. One big takeaway for me was that you have to be a 24-hour leader. There, there's there's a fine line between being you know an athlete and then a student athlete, right? But a lot of people kind of portray their um, leadership just on the field, the court, the track, you know, certain stuff like that. But w when it really comes down to it, being a student athlete, that is where you're going to portray being a leader, right? Because it's not just on the track, field, the court. It's 24 hours because that's, that's what's truly going to show who you are and how you reflect um, your leadership. And that's, that's kind of what the forum was about. Um, I mean, it's called the leadership forum, and that's – uh, that was one of my biggest takeaways, like not just leading by example on the on the track, but also being, you know, this influential person off the track. So that's kind of where I, you know, that's what I took away, but also that's what I'm trying to really bring back to Concordia. So how did you hear about that opportunity, and then how did you go about getting selected to go? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, last year I actually applied for it as well, um, and then Reagan she actually mentioned that I should apply again, so I did. Um, and I, I got selected uh, through our school, but then there's also a national competition that you would have to get selected, your application would have to get selected. And, uh, you know, I was blessed enough to get selected there and just went to, I, and initially I didn't know what it was about. Like I had no idea what a leadership forum would do, but it, it honestly, like just being surrounded by such different you know, different perspectives, like, because it wasn't just Division Two, it was Division One, Two, Three, and, you know, all these different con conferences, and you're seeing so many different perspectives on what's truly happening in the NCAA, and it, it really showed me that the student body, like, not just the student body, but the athletic body, we have such a big image, like, we, we really have a lot more power than I think a lot of the athletes think we do, so that's kind of where I would like to say just, you know, as far as, an, as far as being an athlete, we really do have, you know, influential power to lead other students, whether it be ath athletics or not. We have power to really influence people, and that's, that's huge. So, Certainly sounds like a great opportunity. Congratulations yeah. on that. And uh, for both of you, thanks for being here today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Colin Goligoski, Josh Johansson here <laughs> on Golden Bear Insider, and that'll – Wrap it up for the show here this month. Do want to thank all of the guests again, Amanda Johnson, Anna Schmidt from women's basketball, Joey James, Diallo Powell from the men's team, Brady Starkey and Casey Williams from volleyball, and then again Colin Goligoski, Josh Johansson here from track and field. Extra thanks to all the student athletes this month. Pretty busy time of year with finals and everything going on, getting ready to the holidays, so we appreciate them giving us a few minutes here for this show and we'll be back at some point in January after the holidays so 